it is said as in when we follow as law students when we follow it the the respondents should be identified clearly and if you can't you have to mention that within these petitions just uh, explain to us uh, if uh, the because one would say that they wouldn't be too clear about who the respondents would be in a certain case in in those instances how does the yes, the first work? first principle is uh if you are making any allegation that any particular person has violated your rights then you have to make that person a party because uh, for the court to give a decision you have to hear both sides it's only after hearing both sides that you can give a decision so you have to make the person whom you say violated your rights must be named as a respondent then also if from the relief that you are getting if somebody else's rights are affected then such a person also should be made a party i'll give if you if i take a small example supposing you are saying that you were denied a particular promotion in the public service so and who did that maybe the head of department selected the wrong person and you want to go to court so you have to make the head of department a party or if the if the appointing authority is the public service commission you make the members of the public service commission parties but at the same time it is also important if you ask in the court to nullify the appointments and give it to you yeah. because you are saying that somebody else was wrongly appointed and you want it nullified then it is nothing but correct to listen to the person who has got the appointment so if there is anybody who will get affected by the decision that you are seeking from court then such a person also should be made a respondent then also there can be situations where uh somebody who influenced uh or helped the the public authority in violating your rights now for, for instance supposing you are taken when at, at the police station a police constable assaults you so who violated the uh, uh, right the constable violated the right but the oic was watching you right. probably he was in his office in a glass cage mm. uh and uh, he didn't do anything he didn't encourage him but he just kept quiet but he can very well see that you are being tortured now the fact that he did not intervene although he had all the opportunity of doing so and being the head of the uh, station he can be made a party because he assisted in committing that crime through omission through omission so uh, the you can file a fundamental rights not only because somebody did some act in violation of your rights you can also file a case where through inaction if you are rights are violated right so those are the people generally and also of course the attorney general must be made a party now this is very important because sometimes even in the department uh the often people tend to believe that the attorney general is there to safeguard the rights of the state yeah. or the or the violator if the if the if if you were uh, assaulted by the police constable probably uh, the attorney general will appear for him yeah. but the duty of the attorney general is not only to see the interests of the state but also to see the interests of the people people yeah. the petitioner who complains yeah. because he is a office of the state who has to ensure the protection of fundamental rights by all organs of government and those responsible in uh, the uh, in uh, engaging in government activity so actually the attorney general has a dual role right. on the one hand he has to protect the rights of the state as well as ensure the rights of citizen right so he has a very big role in a fundamental rights application so it is imperative that although he may not have done anything you have to make the attorney general a part so just to i think we're deviating from the topic a little bit but i wanted to clarify uh 
are there instances where you see the attorney general now if the attorney general is to do a bit of a role like the judge and to really understand with what happened to both either the petitioner and the respondent does the attorney general or does that attorney general have the capacity to step down from representing a certain client or will that be a requirement uh, that often happens uh, because sometimes when uh, if the attorney general after examining the brief uh, comes to the uh, if it is in his view that the person has in fact tortured yeah then uh, and and also the uh, eventually the attorney general will have to prosecute him in the high court so he can't be defending him in the supreme court and prosecuting him in the high court now in a situation like that he'll he'll ask him to retain private counsel and the attorney general will refuse to appear for him.